This week we fulfill our need for instant gratification with Podcasting On Demand. Welcome to the Renaissance Woodworker, episode number 30. We're going to thickness a board by hand to help out a friend in need. Hey everybody, welcome back to my shop. We are going to skip pretty significantly ahead in the Rubo bench build. As a favor to my friend Rick Waters over the Splinter Board podcast, I am, well, we had a conversation break out on Twitter and he was wondering what the best way was to thickness a board without a thickness planer. In other words, to do it by hand. And uh, conversation started uh, going out there and I said, you know what? I was going to do a podcast about this, but I'll bump it up in the rotation and go ahead and get it out now. So I have some uh, 12 quarter pieces of stock that I'll be using for my vice chops and also for the sliding uh, dead man mechanism for the, the sliding vice. Um, and I need them to be 8 inches wide. My joiner is 6 inches wide, so I knew I would have to be, I would have to be flattening them without the use of the power joiner. So I figured uh, what better opportunity to show us how to thickness this. This board is, uh, well it is 12 quarter stock, but it actually right now in its rough form is about three and uh, three and a half inches thick. I'd like to get it down to final milled around three inches thick. And I'll be using this as the sliding portion of the sliding leg vise. This is the back portion where the nut sits. So uh, actually it's a great opportunity to put the Rubo bench top to, to use. This is a section, a 19, 20 inch section that I've got glued up. Uh, it's ready to actually be, um, have the bench crafted in vise installed into it. So I've got it down here on saw horses and I'll go ahead and put it to use as a bench for the first time. Here's the bench top as I have it now. It is uh, four inches thick. It's not even on the ends. As you can see, I've got some unevenness here that needs to be trimmed off. That'll be the first step in the bench crafted installation. But what I did is take a batten on the back and just go ahead and clamp it into place. And that holds this, um, this board in place so I can actually work across the grain and the board won't move. And then down here clamped to the front of the bench is just another stop to keep her from sliding longitudinally once I start to plane with the grain. So first thing I'm going to do is determine what, if any, twist I have in the board. And I'll do that with just uh, some uh, poor man's winding sticks here. These are just two pieces of poplar that I had lying around for another project. Just for ease of uh, use, I went ahead and actually ran a black Sharpie marker all on the top edge of that. Just a little bit of contrast. And I set those on the board. And essentially, we'll come down here and sight along the board for twist. And I don't know whether you're gonna be able to pick that up on the camera or not, but this board is actually relatively flat. There is a slight bit of twist right there. There's a little bit sticking up over the top of the camera, which tells me that corner in the back is a little high. But for the most part, it's a pretty flat board. The other thing we wanna look at is, first of all, what final dimensions do we want for this board? And I said I'd like to mill it, final milling to three inches thick. I've obviously got this knot in the middle here and there's a, a pretty deep inclusion there. So I'll want to take a large amount of wood off this side if I can. But at the same time, I can face this in towards the back of the bench and it's not going to show. So I don't need to worry too much about that. So let's look at the other side here. I'm trying to get it so that I want to set it on the bench so it's pretty stable to work with. And the other side's actually pretty good, so I think this will be the side that faces out. As I look along the grain, it may be difficult to see because this is rough sawn, but my grain is rising this direction. So eventually when I start planing longitudinally, I'll be needing to run this way. But to start, what I want to do is actually just flatten one face. And I'll be doing that with my scrub plane in a process that's called traversing, where you actually just go straight across the grain. So let's go ahead and uh, flatten the first side. It's actually really good timing on this video because uh, last week was my birthday and I got this new Veritas scrub plane for my birthday. Key with the scrub plane is it has 
uh, a, a radically curved iron. This is actually a three inch radius on this iron here. And it allows you to work across the grain without creating a great deal of tear out. is I am getting a cut consistently all the way across the face of the wood and that's how we're going to be flattening out that face to work with. It's a little bit tough around this knot. So what I'm actually going to do, just like I were planing, you know, with any other plane, is I'll skew the angle of the blade just a little to get it across there. you to carve through that. Sorry about that. Take my straight edge. That knot is still very much a high spot, and that's definitely going to produce some issues here because it's really, really hard wood. But for the most part, I've got it flat across the length this way. Now I want to take a straight edge along the length and see how I'm doing here. Again, I'm pretty lucky. Relatively flat. Got a little bit of a low spot here and a low spot right in here. So now I'll switch to my jack plane. work diagonally along the length. A little bit deeper cut. A little bit more. see as it starts, we're not getting much of a cut because we've got these scallops and it's just taking the tops off the scallops. The more we work that, the more shaving we get. Good. What we'll do is flip the board around. the other direction. That knot is definitely making this more difficult. Yeah. A little bit of work there. A little bit of work there. 
and go ahead and mark the low spots. I am actually flat across that knot right now. Flat there. Pretty good along the length. Let's go back and work these spots. with the grain. Basically, as I'm hit, hitting sections that aren't quite flat, and you'll hear the flatter I get it, the more consistent the sound will be. There we go. I feel pretty good about that actually. Let's double check it. I am dead flat on the length. No coming across the width. Let's check that knot. We're good. This side's completely flat. I'll take my combination square. And I'll set it just over three inches. Just give me a little bit of fudge factor. And reference can the face, the face I've already flattened. I'll go ahead and run a line all the way along the edge. is my thickness. I'll run this all the way around the board.
to the scrub plane and essentially playing to that line or just slightly above that line or at least the bottom of the scallop should be at that line and then I'll repeat the process all over again. Okay, I've made a couple of passes across the board with the scrub plane on the second side and I just wanted to get in here a little bit closer and show you the line that I'm referencing scribe right there you can see I've still got about maybe three sixteenths of an inch of thickness to remove from the board Get better lighting so you can see that and that is all the way around the board it's also pretty easy to see where you know the board is a little bit thinner like right here quite a bit thinner in this area and a lot thicker all the way down and that was really where the, the twist was that I was trying to work out. I'll also mention that for those of you hybrid woodworkers uh, if you're just starting out trying to figure out whether you buy a joiner or a planer first I am definitely a proponent of buying the planer first because you saw pretty much in real time how long it took me to flatten the opposing face of this at that point, this board is, is uh, 11 inches wide. Your typical lunchbox planer could go ahead and uh, flatten and parallel the other side. So really, the joiner is nice when you're doing a whole lot of work, but you know, for wide boards like this, really this allows you to flatten and parallel you know, 13 inch boards. I know my lunchbox planer will do 13 inches, but for the purpose of being old school here, we're going to get back to work and continue flattening or continue thicknessing this board and we'll go back to the scrub plane. We're obviously traversing this board and you can see as you run off the other side, you will see some tear out. I'm still a little bit of a distance in this inch area here. A little bit of distance away from my line, so I'm not too concerned about it. As I get a little bit closer, what I will probably want to do is cut a chamfer along this edge to prevent any of that tear out. Over in this area, hopefully you can see that. Some better lighting here. We're right at the line. We're right at the line along the edge. And along this edge. So, got a little bit more thicknessing work to do on this side of the board. But from there, we'll go back into our diagonal strokes with the jack plane. As I plane the tops of those scallops. there. Let's get the straight edge. Got a low spot here on the end. Probably need to clean up using the joiner plane. Maybe a little bit longer plane to span that section. So the low spot starts right about here. I think uh, I'm getting a shaving there, but the plane is actually rocking forward a little as I come across. I can solve that with a longer plane. So that's really the principle of thicknessing a board. I'm <laughs> actually a little out of breath. Whew, good workout. But essentially, as you can see, the initial flattening of this face was really quite easy and took very little time. Once you got that perfectly flat, you reference the other face and uh, describe a line or draw a line all the way around with a scrub plane or a four plane or 
any plane that can take a thick cut that has a curved iron, you can quickly remove quite a bit of stock. A lot of times you can even take almost a sixteenth of an inch shaving with the scrub plane. And then just continue to flatten that surface, paying particular attention to those lines all the way around. If you've gotten it relatively flat by traversing, it's just a matter of taking off those tops and you should end up with a parallel face. So, Rick Waters, I hope this helped you, buddy. I hope that you can now see what you need to do.